I thought it would be useful to look at how the radio interference, magnetic interference, and static interference in a typical office might affect the data we're getting from our EPIC headset and how that might affect our detections. We have a standard office mat over carpeting here, presumably a non-conductive one, standard office chair, the temperature and humidity right now is 75.5 and 27 degrees relative humidity. I've used an inexpensive Radio Shack voltometer, a standard 5.8 gigahertz cordless telephone. We have an Android cell phone with earbuds using a Bluetooth mouse and Bluetooth dongle as well as a genuine down under Blue Ant Bluetooth headset. We have a gauss meter showing about 1.4, 1.5 milligauss which is pretty uh, typical for in-house especially considering we're so close to all this electronic equipment. Over here we have uh, our star research subject. I'll call her Electra. She's a styrofoam wig model wearing a saline so solution soaked wash rag. The resistance across this wash rag is approximately one third of a mega ohm similar to my head. Uh, okay, we have a good uniform contact right now. On this software, there's adjustments for maximum amplitude, minimum amplitude, and auto scale. They're grayed out on my version 1.5 but I really like to see those made available in future editions. I feel being able to filter out the low voltage background noise and some of the high voltage <clears throat> artifact would be very useful in getting repeatable data. Okay, as we uh, take a look at what we have here, Let's see how different things might uh, affect this headset. If I take a standard phone here, turn it on, and place a call, We can see there's a very pronounced interference from this 5.8 gigahertz phone. Seems to be most pronounced right over this left ear, but uh, probably be hard to get reliable brain maps or detections while you're talking on your wireless gigahertz phone. Also wondered what the effect might be talking on a regular cell phone. Have an Android phone here. And we're going to call up voicemail. And you can see uh, this has a very pronounced effect as well here. So the closer you get the more pronounced but your cell phone definitely has an effect on uh, <clears throat> these readings that we're getting here. Kind of wondered what effect a Bluetooth device might have. So I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth Hopefully turn it on.
Somehow my Bluetooth doesn't want to cooperate. Maybe it's because I was in the middle of a phone call. Okay, now it's going. If I uh, put the Bluetooth here, and we'll make another call with the Bluetooth right on the sensitive part of the headset. Okay, we're calling up now, and presumably the Bluetooth is hearing this, but the Bluetooth doesn't seem to be creating much interference over here the way the phone does. Certainly when I bring the phone in close, we get interference, but the Bluetooth by itself doesn't seem to be making any discernible <clears throat> interference beyond the regular background noise of this instrument. Curious to see uh, what uh, earbuds might do. So I'm going to plug in some earbuds here and uh, then again we can uh, make another phone call. and put the earbuds up on the lecture here. Okay, we're on a phone call now with the earbuds actually contacting the sensor. And as long as I keep my hand away, uh, the earbuds, there's a little bit of action, don't seem to be having a whole lot of effect as to what's going on right here. There seems like there's a little bit of something going on there. The one other thing I was curious about, uh, we have a Bluetooth mouse right here that can uh, go around. And uh, we have the dongle for that right here. I was curious how much that Bluetooth mouse might affect things. And it uh, doesn't seem to have a whole lot of effect. I found this USB extension very helpful in moving the EPIC dongle closer to the subject when I'm testing them. The real surprise came when I figured out how much of an effect I have. I have some socks on now. I'm rubbing them on my static-free mat. You can see how things are going crazy now just from my socks rubbing on the mat. I put my hands nearby and we get a very pronounced effect, I believe, from the static charge in my hands. I'm not Merlin the Magician or a magic Reiki healer. I just believe that I've created static by rubbing my socks on this mat and this is having a most profound effect on the data. I can even get spikes by clapping over here nothing but the static charge in my body. I think measures need to be taken to reduce the static, whether that's through humidity or grounding, but that can most profoundly affect the data. One thing I've uh, had problems with is getting repeatable brain maps. I took and recorded uh, three minute sessions on Electra here with no interference and plotted those out as spectral maps and then plotted them out as component maps. I was kind of hoping to get uniform light green or blue all over but I have kind of a random assortment of colors going every different way and I don't think Electra is interjecting that much thought process to be creating that. So I'm not sure what that's coming from, but hoping if I can filter out some of the lower voltage data, it may correct this.